today we will study about eddy currents eddy currents are basically currents but these are somewhat different in the sense so what are these eddy currents we will study today so the first thing we will study is what are eddy currents this is a very small topic but this topic is very important and you should learn this topic by heart because many times the question is asked on eddy current and it is in numerical form or in the theoretical form and it is also as in the competitive exams so it should be very much clear in your mind that what are these eddy currents it is very simple to study these eddy currents so first of all study the meaning of eddy because this is what a somewhat new word to us so whenever you hear this word eddy currents it simply means circulating current or the current which is in the form of ripples I hope you know what ripples are. Ripple. If you want to see the ripple, just whenever you are near to a collection of water and you throw a stone over there, suppose this is a stone you have thrown. So out the so surrounding the stone, you can see some ripples. So this is what we call as ripples. So the water starts circulating this way. This we call as ripples. Similarly, the word current is formed. Flowing in the form of ripples, then we call it a circular current or eddy current. So, like here, the ripples are formed in water. The eddy currents are formed in conductors. So, whenever in any of the conductor, there are electric current which flows in the circular path, which flow in the form of ripples, we call it as eddy current. So, we can say that in conductors, the electric current is induced. in well defined paths like circular loops so this current we call as eddy current now how this eddy currents are formed why there is a concept of eddy currents so first we'll study because we here we have said that the electric current is induced so we have studied in the electromagnetic induction that if we have any coil and near to this coil we bring a magnet which may be a bar magnet So this is the north pole and this is the south pole. So if we bring this magnet towards the coil, or we take this bar magnet away from the coil, then a current is induced within this coil. And to measure the current, we use a galvanometer. This is a galvanometer. So initially, when the bar magnet is not moving. magnetic flux is not flowing then this galvanometer shows zero that means it is in the mid position now when we bring this permanent magnet that is a bar magnet either near to the coil that means it is moving our bar magnet is moving or we take this bar magnet away from the coil then a magnetic flux due to this bar magnet is flowing through the coil and if you are moving this power magnet then this magnetic flux is changing or the magnetic flux is varying so whenever there is a change in the magnetic flux whenever there is a variation in the magnetic flux then a current is induced and we can see a deflection that means the galvanometer shows some reading either in the right side it will show it like this or it may be in the left side to pan on the direction of flow of current right so suppose this is a bar magnet and we bring the north pole close to this coil then there is a flow of the magnetic flux and if we are bringing it near that means the magnetic flux is increasing 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 and also it is changing so due to the change in the magnetic flux there is an emf which we call as electromotive force so this electromotive force induced current in the coil is shown in the galvanometer and similarly if we take this bar magnet away from the coil then also if it is moving away then the magnetic flux starts decreasing also the magnetic flux is changing so whenever the magnetic flux is changing then there is an induced emf so either by bringing the bar magnet here to the coil or taking it away from the coil we will see a current in the form of induced emf 
and always remember that this effect is vice versa. Vice versa means if we keep this bar magnet fixed and we move the coil near to the bar magnet or we make the coil away from the bar magnet or we take the coil away from the bar magnet then also the magnetic flux increases or decreases then also there is an induced EMF. That means whenever there is a magnetic flux is induced, that means whenever there is a magnetic flux which is changing, then an EMF is induced, which we call as electromotive force. And that is what given by law of Faraday. So we have studied this in electromagnetic induction and also we can decide the direction of flow of current. So this electromagnetic induction, it is given by law of Faraday. That whenever there is a change in the magnetic flux, then an electromagnetic force is induced in the form of induced current. So whatever is the current we are detecting in the galvanometer is the induced current. So we call this current as induced current because this current is producing due to the change in the magnetic flux. So that is what is electromagnetic induction. So this is the law of Faraday. In which direction the current is flowing? That also depends that which pole we are taking near to the coil. Suppose we are taking this north pole near to the coil. Then this electromotive force or the induced current flows in such a direction that it always opposes the reason which is producing it. Now what is the reason of production of this current? This current is producing because the north pole is coming near to the coil. So it won't to oppose. Now how can it oppose the coming near of the north pole? Because we know that the similar poles, they repel each other. So the north pole is coming near to the coil, but the coil or the induced EMF does not want that north pole should come near. So what it will do? It will try to oppose the coming near of the north pole. So it itself will behave as a north pole. So if this current in the coil will behave as a north pole, then it can oppose this north pole, the coming of the north pole. So the direction of flow of current will be just make simply N. I'll show you how to make N and S. First you have to do a vertical line. Draw a vertical line like this. Right? And if you want to make it a north pole, then go like this. So this is a north pole. So now this electromagnetic current or induced current will try to oppose this north pole. So the current will flow in this direction. That is in the anti-clockwise direction. See? So this coil will behave as a north pole and it opposes the coming near of north pole. Similarly, if we take the north pole or the bar magnet away from the coil, then also the magnetic flux changing and the EMF is inducing that this coil will also oppose the going away of the north pole. Now, what the coil has to do the force of going away of the north pole? Now, we know that opposite pole attracts each other. So now it has to behave like a south pole so that it can oppose the going away of the north pole. So now the current in the coil will behave as a south pole. Now how to make the south pole? Similarly, you have to draw a vertical line like this. That is common either you are drawing a north pole or you are drawing a south pole. Just draw a vertical line. If you want to make it an, go upward, make an. If you want to make a s, then make s like this. Right, so this is how we make us. So now the current will flow in this way, that is in the clockwise direction because as if you draw, then it is in the clockwise direction. So the current will flow like this in the southward direction. So it will behave as a south pole in the clockwise direction. So it will behave as a south pole and it will oppose the going away of north pole. And similar thing happened if we take the coil near to the north pole or take it away from the north pole. Now if we change the polarity of these poles, that means this will become the south pole and this will become the north pole. Then what will happen? 
So this will become our south pole and this will become our north pole. So now the south pole is coming near. So it will behave as a south pole and the current will flow like this. So south south will pose. And similarly if the south pole is going away from the coil, then to attract the south pole, it will become a north pole. So this way you can easily decide that the current will increase if the magnetic bar or is coming near then the magnetic flux will increase and the current will increase and the direction of flow of current is decided by the opposition of the pole and if the bar magnet is going away then the magnetic flux is decreasing it is becoming less so the current will also become less but in which direction the current is flowing that will depend on which pole is going away from the coil so to remember the simple logic that you can easily understand the electromagnetic induction. So this process of electromagnetic induction was given by Faraday. So this we call as log Faraday. And the direction of flow of current such that it opposes, EMF opposes the reason due to which it is produced. This is given by law of Lance. So the whole theory of electromagnetic induction is given by only two laws. Faraday law and Lance law. Faraday law gives the origin of induced EMF and Laszlo gives the direction of induced EMF. That induced EMF is always in the opposite direction of rate of change of magnetic flux with respect to time. So that is all as the theory of electromagnetic induction. Now in place of this coil, if we use any conductor, that means instead of a coil, we are using any bulk conductor. So in the theory of all the induced EMF electromagnetic induction, if we replace our coil with any of the conductor and it is capped in the magnetic field which is changing, say bar magnet, which allows the magnetic flux to flow through the conductor and this magnetic flux is changing. Like here the magnetic flux was changing in the coil, here in the conductor also if the magnetic flux is changing then there is an induced current. And this induced current always flow in circular loops. So that means if we keep any of the bulk conductor in the varying magnetic field, then there are induced current which flow in regular patterns. Like these swirls or these ripples, these ripples we also call as swirls. So the electric current flows in regular patterns like swirl eddies in water. So we call them eddy current. So it is clear now how these eddy currents are produced. So when bulk conductors are capped in changing magnetic flux, then induced current flows in regular patterns like swirling eddies in water. These are called eddy currents. Now let's just give any example of eddy currents. So if we want to give any example of eddy current, then we have to take a bulk conductor and we have to keep it in the varying or changing magnetic field. So the magnetic flux will change. So we take any common magnet. So this is the south pole and here we take as the north pole. And between these two magnetic poles, we are swinging or we are moving one copper plate that is a bulk conductor. So we are moving this so the magnetic flux will change. So these are our two permanent magnets and this we have fixed here and we have connected through a track we have connected this a copper plate. So this copper plate is a single copper plate which is swinging between these two permanent magnets. So we, we allow this copper plate to swing like a simple pendulum between two strong magnets which are permanent magnets and we know down the time period, time period taken for the one swing. So when we allow this copper plate to swing then we know down that for one oscillation the amplitude is decreasing with time. That means the distance which is traveled in one swing is decreasing with time because that is what the amplitude. So as the time increases, the amplitude for this simple pendulum like motion decreases and slowly, slowly it decreases like that and after some time it stops rotating.
So as you can see, initially, if the copper plate is like swinging like between these two permanent magnets, then the amplitude decreases, 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 and it comes to a stop after some time. So this type of motion, when the amplitude is decreasing with time, we call as damped motion. Damped means it is getting slow, 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 and eventually it stops. So that we call as damp motion. So when the copper plate is allowed to swing between these two permanent magnets, then in the initially it is swinging up to the large distance, then the distance decreases. This distance we call as amplitude. So this decreases, 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 and the amplitude becomes zero. That means it stops swinging. So our copper plate stops moving in the magnetic field. So if our plate is swinging, that means the magnetic flux which is associated with the plate is changing because this plate is going between the magnetic field and then it is coming out, then again going between the magnetic field and coming out. So the magnetic flux is changing between the plates. So due to the change in the magnetic flux, some eddy currents, circular currents in the form of spills, in the form of ripples, you can say are the swirls or ripples. So these are induced in a circular loop. These induced current are produced within the copper plate. So when it goes into the copper plate, then say this is the direction of flow of the current. It is in the clockwise direction. And when it is coming out, then again it is changes because there is a change in the magnetic flux. See now it is in the anti-clockwise direction. So, due to the change in the magnetic flux, the direction of induced current in the circular loop also changes. So, these eddy currents are produced in the copper plate. These currents are unwanted currents because these are eventually slowing out the oscillation or the swing of copper plates. Because here, due to the eddy currents, the heat is produced, which is given by. The damping is due to the heat which is produced, due to damp motion, this heat is produced. So whatever is the energy, this energy is dissipated in the form of heat. And due to this heat energy loss, which is due to the production of eddy currents, this motion is damped and then it slows down and eventually stops. So that is why we say that these eddy currents are undesirable. So we do not want these eddy currents to flow. So this is just a simple example of how eddy current flows. So if we want to see that how the copper plate behaves, so when it is coming out of the permanent magnetic field, then there is a not pull, then it has to attract. So the current flows in the copper plate in the clockwise direction. So that makes a south pole. So it is attracted towards the pole. And when it is coming inside, then there is a north pole, so it has to oppose. So the current in copper plate will be in the anticlockwise direction, so now it is behaving as a north pole. So as we see that our copper plate, when it swings between the permanent magnet, then the direction varies. When it is out, then it is clockwise direction, and when it is in, then it is in the anticlockwise direction. Then how to reduce eddy currents? If you want to reduce these eddy currents, then what we need to do? Because these eddy currents are produced with the flow of circulating current. If you want to decrease these eddy currents, because these are circulating within the surface of the bulk conductor, so if we decrease this area, if we decrease the area of the copper plate, then the area through which these eddy currents are flowing will also decrease. So suppose this is our copper plate, and through this, the circulating current or the eddy current are flowing. So if we make some slot into it, that means we have simply decreased the area of the copper plate. Then the surface through which the eddy currents were flowing, the area through which the eddy currents were flowing were also decreased. You can understand in other way also because current we say is I is equal to because if you Calculate the resistance, then resistance R is given by rho L upon A. So rho is dependent on the material. So we are not changing the material. L also not we are varying. We are simply changing the cross-section area. So if we decrease the cross-section area, then our resistance will increase. Because this is inversely proportional to the cross-section area. So if we decrease the area, then resistance will increase. 
and if resistance will increase then the current will decrease so this way we can reduce the flow of current so either you can understand this way that we have decreased the area so the area which is available for the circulating order of current is decreased or you can understand through this formula that if we increase the resistance then current will decrease so to reduce the adi currents we make some slots out in the copper plate so there is less space available for the flow of eddy current and the eddy current i that is the induced current will eventually decrease so what you can say that if we make rectangular slots in the copper plate then the area available to the flow of eddy current is less so if we are drawing if there is a pendulum so within this pendulum we draw a slot like this or holes like this then it reduces the electromagnetic damping and the plate the copper plate swings more freely so this way we can reduce the adi currents so students now you can simply take a screenshot of what are adi currents how they are produced what are the examples of adi currents and also how we can reduce the adi currents because next we are studying that what are the advantages and disadvantages of adi currents as we have seen as we have seen in the above example that adi currents is causing a trouble in the flow that means these adi currents are simply producing heat and these are undesirable because whatever is the energy due to adi current it is lost this energy is lost in the form of heat so we always say that adi currents are undesirable so adi currents are undesirable because the heat of the code and dissipate our electrical energy in the form of heat so that is the disadvantage so this heat is lost in the form of p is equal to i squared r so there is heat loss p is equal to i squared r so the energy is lost in this form now there are also certain advantage of this adi current so let us see what are the advantages of adi current so the first advantage of and the current is that it is used for magnetic breaking in trains because the strong electromagnetic field is used to run over railways that is our trains what happens that we use strong mag electromagnets and with these are placed between the rails in electrically powered trains so these trains are run due to electromagnetic fields and when these electromagnetic fields are activated then there is also eddy current so whenever there is electromagnetic field then there is a change in the magnetic flux and there are eddy currents are introduced within the conductors so due to these eddy currents which are developed in the rail that opposes the motion of the train so it is utilized to put a brake in the train so whenever you want to stop the train then the magnetic brakes are used so due to the change in the magnetic field this adi currents are produced and these adi currents has put breaks in the train so we can write down so this is the first advantage of adi currents that we can use it for put magnetic breaking in our trains second important use of adi currents is that we all know it is used for electromagnetic damping in galvanometers we have a galvanometer we have seen we draw it like this this is a symbol we use for galvanometer and if you see the galvanometer then there is a zero in the middle and depending on the direction of the current this galvanometer is used to detect the current so depending on the direction of current we get either deflection on this side or this side so we have equal scale this side and this side so when there is no current the needle is in mid but if it is some current then it is either in the left side or towards the right side so the core of the galvanometer is made up of non magnetic metallic materials so when there is a coil in the galvanometer it oscillates then adi currents are generated in the core because core are made up of metal so metal is a good conductor so whenever this coil oscillates then it produces change in the magnetic flux and adi currents are generated in the core and it opposes the motion of the coil and the coil comes to rest quickly so electromagnetic damping in galvanometers is used for the motion of moving coil in galvanometers 
and the currents are generated due to electromagnetic induction and due to the flow of the currents the energy is lost in the form of heat so there is always a heat produced due to the flow of the currents so this heat we can utilize in the induction furnaces so what we do we use a very high frequency alternating current so a high frequency ac current is passed through the coil and this coil surrounds the metal so when the current is produced due to electromagnetic induction the induced current is produced in the coil then there are eddy currents within the metal and a high amount of heat is produced this heat is then used to melt the metals so it is that high that these eddy currents generated in the metals that produce very high temperature that high temperature which is sufficient to melt the metals so the eddy current is used to melt the metals in the induction furnaces Both these of eddy currents is an electric power meters that we use at our home, which gives our electric usage. So what is the reading we get? That always it is in our electric power meter that how much power is consumed. So if you have seen your main power meter at home, you would be able to see that there is sometimes a red point or a shining point. which rotates and after a frequency or after some interval you can see it rotating so this there is a metal disc inside the power meter and this metal disc is also rotated due to eddy currents so this is a metal disc and this shiny metal disc in the electric power meter is rotated by eddy currents the electric currents are induced in the disc by magnetic field produced by ac current and as you know that ac current has sine waves so it is a sinusoidally varying current so magnetic field is produced by these sinusoidally varying current in the coil and due to the change in the magnetic flux eddy current is induced in the metal disc so this metal disc rotates due to eddy currents so that is the fourth use of eddy currents so as we have just seen that eddy currents are unwanted they produce unwanted heat and so we want to avoid the eddy currents but in some fields in our daily life they also have some practical advantages that means we can also use eddy currents in a useful way that make it the advantages of eddy currents we can use it in our trains these are our daily life examples where we use eddy currents to put the brakes in train that is known as the magnetic braking in trains so that is the first practical use of eddy currents we can use as that we can use them in our galvanometers that is in our physics lab where we see the galvanometer so wherever we are having a moving coil so due to the eddy currents the coil quickly comes to rest and gives us a reading in the galvanometer so the second use we can see in our lab third use is in furnaces where we use to melt the materials because metals melt at high temperature so and we know that the heat is produced by the flow of eddy currents so we use coils and then we flow high frequency current so high amount of heat is generated by eddy currents and then we to use it to melt our materials at high temperature so that is the third practical use of eddy current and fourth is we can see it our home itself our electric power meter our main power meter the rest the disc that rotates that gives us the reading of the power consumption that is also rotated using the eddy current so you can take a screenshot of all these four important uses of the eddy current so thus we can say that although it is unwanted but also in some means it is very advantageous to us so that is today's very small but very interesting and very important topic eddy current so always remember eddy current because eddy means fills or ripple so wherever there is a rotating current in conductor due to electromagnetic induction that is a eddy current so whenever you see any question or numerical or eddy current always remember it as a rotating current so try to do well and always remember eddy current if you want to see more such lectures coming to you which are more interesting than which can explain the physics in the most basic and interesting way please subscribe to our channel physics class keep commenting keep liking keep sharing 
and keep me updating what more topics or what new topics you want me to include in physics so you can get more close to physics and subscribe it at your early so that you can get continuous notifications for more such new and interesting lectures and also some interesting tips on preparing for theory and numericals till then keep studying keep good keep laughing thank you